Hi guys, so this is Shalini and I am back to you with another video and today we will discuss on hemothorax. So if you like the video and the content, kindly do like, share and subscribe and also let me know your comments in the comment box. As an introduction, the exact incidence of hemothorax is unclear. Chest injuries can occur in approximately 60% of all polytrauma cases and hemothorax is most frequently caused by chest trauma. This is a distinguishing picture about pneumothorax, hemothorax and pneumohemothorax. So in the first picture if you see this is the pleural cavity which is filled with air and hence it is called as pneumothorax. The second picture if you see the pleural cavity is filled with blood and hence it is called as hemothorax. Hemoneumothorax is a case in which you have air as well as blood which gets filled into the pleural cavity. The clinical definition of hemothorax. Hemothorax is the collection of blood in the space between the chest wall and the lung and as you know the space is called as pleural cavity. There can be many reasons why a patient presents to you with hemothorax. So I have just categorized the whole section into two called as traumatic cases and non-traumatic reasons. So in the first case you see traumatic is blunt trauma and penetrating trauma. Penetrating trauma like in case of a bulgur injury or a stab injury, things like that. Non-traumatic cases is primary carcinoma of the lung or in case of any other metastatic carcinoma. Tuberculosis, necrotizing infections can also be other reasons where a patient presents to you with hemothorax. Blunt or penetrating trauma which I have mentioned in the previous slide can cause a variety of pathological changes which can range from as simple as a chest wall injury and airway obstruction to cardiac injury. But we have to understand that the connecting link of most of it is hemothorax where you have blood getting accumulated into your pleural cavity and what happens to these patients? They present to you with hyperventilation and tissue hypoxia where there is less amount of oxygen for the cells which leads to build up of lactic acid and eventually leading to acidosis in most of the patients. What we have been discussing so far is the commonest risk factor for hemothorax. But now I'd like to list few of the not very common reason but still can lead to hemothorax. So the first one is blood clotting defect. Second thing is cardiac and thoracic surgery, pulmonary infarction, embolism, bullous emphysema, hemorrhagic telangiectasia, intralobar, extralobar sequestration and also abdominal pathologies. Many patients would clinically differ when they present to you but the cardinal features are always the same. So if you have a patient who is in respiratory distress and an auscultation there is reduced breath sound which is also associated with shock then the first differential you have to definitely think is hemothorax. As I have mentioned to you, there are a variety of clinical manifestations that each patient might present to you with. But I'd like to list out some of it for you. The first one is chest pain. Then is cold and clammy or pale skin. This is because of reduced circulation. Tachycardia, that is increased heart rate. Dyspnea, which means breath, difficulty breathing, restlessness, subcutaneous emphysema. This refers to air which gets trapped beneath your skin and also dullness to percussion. So these are some of the clinical manifestations which, we, which you will see in a person who presents to you with hemothorax. So diagnosis. Diagnosis basically I'd like to talk about history and risk stratification. That means you have to assess of what kind of injury or what was the history behind this hemothorax. Was it a traumatic cause? Was it a non-traumatic cause? Was there a road traffic accident or a bulgur injury or a knife stab or anything? So the history has to be properly assessed. Physical examination would definitely reveal you findings related to reduced breath sounds or uh, difficulty in breathing and also the patient might present to you with shock because of the loss of blood. Imaging studies like chest x-ray and ultrasonography will confirm your diagnosis whether it is a hemothorax or a pneumothorax or a hemoneumothorax. So chest x-ray is definitely one way where you can get closer to your clinical diagnosis. If you look at the picture on the left side, 
the costophrenic angle of both the lobes are very clear. But if you look on the right side, the costophrenic angle of one lobe is clear and on the other lobe is not very clear, which comes, which tells you that there is some amount of effusion. Ultrasound is also definitely another way where you can confirm your clinical diagnosis or come to your confirm your clinical suspicion. So, if you look at this picture between the chest wall and the lung, if you see there is dark fluid collection which points out pleural effusion. On the other side, you have linear repeating lines which is a solid lung mass. So, there are various ways of managing, but I have listed out, pointed out two important. Uh, mainstay of management. The first thing is fluid resuscitation and maintaining the hemodynamic stability of the patient because most of the patients come to you after a trauma and would have had massive blood loss. So, fluid resuscitation is definitely one thing that you have to think about and second thing is thoracentesis or thoracostomy based on your individual patients where you will basically want to drain out the fluid that has got into the pleural cavity causing effusion. So, let us lead a little bit about intercostal drainages. So, before talking about intercostal drainage, I like to tell you something about the safety triangle. So, where exactly will you puncture when you will want to drain the fluid in case there is some amount of fluid or blood inside your pleural cavity. So, if you would like, uh, if you look in the safety triangle or safe triangle as they say in most of the books, the either side is bordered by the pectoralis major and the latissimus dorsi. On the upper side, you have the base of the axilla and lower is bordered by the fifth intercostal space. So, this is called as a safe triangle where you can insert the needle, puncture and drain out the fluid. The position for thoracentesis, if the patient is conscious and cooperative, then you can always ask the patient to sit upright and lean forward. Preferably, you have to give them a pillow where they can lean forward and then you can puncture the site. So, that mostly when it is hemothorax, the blood will definitely settle to the base of the lung and then it will be easy for you to puncture and drain out the fluid. So, this is the position for thoracentesis in case of conscious patients. So, this is another picture which clearly shows you the puncture point. So, I was trying to tell you about the costophrenic angle. So, here the angle is good, here the angle is not very visible and you see there is fluid here. So, if you can puncture at this particular point, then you will be able to drain out the fluid effectively. Another very important thing you have to always remember is, it is always better to guide your drainage or guide your needle using a ultrasound because you will always want to go above the rib. The needle should go above the rib because if you go below the rib, there are chances that you will injure the neurovascular bundle. So, it is always better that you drain or guide your needle across using a ultrasound. And with this needle, you, during thoracentesis, what you do is, you try to drain away all these effusions. So, if the effusion is more, then you think about inserting another tube and intercostal drainage. And if that is not effective, then you will have to think about emergency thoracostomy. So, indications for emergency thoracostomy, massive uh, hemothorax which is more than 1000 ml of blood or more than 1500 ml of blood in the initial drainage and also probably after putting the ICD if you have 300 to 500 ml of blood in the first hour or more than 200 ml of blood in consecutive first three hours then you will have to think of emergency thoracostomy. Increasing size of hemothorax on the chest film is another, re uh, another indication. Persistent hemothorax after two functioning tubes are placed is also an indication. Clotted hemothorax, large air leak preventing effective ventilation and persistent air leak after placement of a second tube or inability to fully expand the lung. So, these are indications where you will have to think of an emergency thoracostomy. And always we have to remember one thing is that this is just a guide and clinical judgment should always be used. There is a lot that nurses can do in case of patients who come to us with hemothorax, especially in the course of time when they are with us and when they are getting prepared with different procedures, there is a lot that you have to think about. The first thing is comprehensive respiratory assessment which begins from the respiratory rate, rhythm, use of intercostal muscles, if there is any chest retractions, dyspnea, symmetry of movement, all of that. So, comprehensive respiratory assessment. 
The second thing you have to think about is maintaining semi fowler's position for these patients, which is very important and would help them in maximum or optimum lung expansion. The third thing that you can think of is pain management because these patients would come to us with uh, terrible pain and even the course of procedures you will have to think about pain management for these patients. Next thing is ensure that you explain these procedures to the patient so that you can gain cooperation from them especially during thoracentesis or thoracostomy and gain necessary consent. Assure them continually and also prepare for emergency procedures like thoracentesis or thoracostomy. Ensure pre post procedural monitoring. Also consider mechanical ventilations in case of patients whose oxygenation is poor. So thank you. I hope that today's video was useful for you and you liked it. So if there is any comments or clarifications and doubts, please let me know your feedback. Otherwise, thank you and have a great day.